Um, and, and then, uh, kind of aside from, from the schedule and the salary, so scheduled salary benefits, maybe, uh, and then tolerance. Am I able to, um, is the job something I can do and not be miserable? Now, I know there are people out there saying right now, like, no, you got to do whatever you, you got to do to get by and blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe you guys are right. And I've certainly been there. I've certainly, you know, done that. I'm kind of doing that now. Um, I sort of enjoy uh, a lot of the, uh, I kind of almost enjoy a lot of the manual labor I've been doing. Uh, as you guys probably know by now, the right side of my body is in pretty rough shape. But um, if, if I have a second to think out how to do the job, then um, actually things are pretty not easy, but I can, I can manage. Um, but yeah, to tolerance. Some, a family member of mine uh, has told me a couple of times, you need to do something that you could, you can at least tolerate. And I think he's right. I, I think, I think that's, that's kind of true. Because, well, that equals turnover for the company which companies don't really like. I mean, high turnover rates don't look good. Um, and, you know, most companies know if they have kind of a difficult job to do. Uh, if I could find a call center up here, you know, I've worked at call centers a lot, and I've always said I don't really want to do it again. I don't really want to live under a headset again. But you know, it's really starting to look like that. That might be, a, you know, something I might do again. Um, just because I know I can, I can tolerate it for you know a couple of years. Uh, you know, if I. If I need to. Um, food service. Uh, food service has turned out not really to be for me. Uh, I've had a couple of food service jobs now, and uh, they they just have not worked out. Uh, you know. So. I guess you're, you're going to be, you know, there's, there's also a lot of different motivations for people, right? If I was a father and I had a wife and kids, I would be doing whatever I had to do to, you know, make sure I'm providing for them. So, you know, I don't have, I don't have that motivation in my life. And there are some people in my life who say, that's good, <laughs> you know. I don't necessarily agree to every extent. Uh, I would certainly like to have those things in my life, but kind of at the same time, it'd be nice to be doing something that I can sort of live with and, and do, and then kind of fall into to a family or something like that, or a girlfriend. And then turn it into more. Um, so, yeah. So, so, so that that's kind of how it works out for me. Schedule, tolerance, salary. Or schedule. Well, yeah. Schedule, tolerance, salary. Um, and, 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 and in in schedule, um, what, did, what did they refer to it as? The um, 
work to life ratio. Uh, which is, is kind of sometimes why it might benefit um, some people to seek out employment with a company that doesn't necessarily or that understands that some people aren't working there to move up, you know. I've said it before, if you're going to college and you're working at this company, they can't really, uh, I understand some college students do move up at their job. Um, you know, I've, I've I've known a couple of managers who are going to college, I mean, but for the most part, you, you know, management can't expect a college student to want to work up uh, in the company. That you know, they wouldn't really be going to school if that's what they were going to do. You know, they would just put every you know all their effort into that. Um, so. You, know, the, you, you have to sort of decide what's important to you. Um, having those benefits and being able to make a lot of money, because if that's the case, then you're probably not going to have a lot of free time, or your free time is going to be chopped up in such a way that it's going to be really difficult to do a lot outside of work because you might only have one day at a time. Or would you like to live on a little less money and kind of have your free time in such a way that you can spend it with your family, uh, you know, maybe leave town for the weekend, um, you know, this, that, or the other. Uh, you know, so you have to kind of, you have to kind of weigh what's important to you. Um, now my family, you know, you guys, uh, I'm sure that I'm, I'm speaking for you uh, pretty accurately here. My family just wants to see me doing well, you know. They'd like to see me making a pretty steady paycheck, uh, for example. Not spending it on junk. Uh, and and I, I certainly understand that. I'd like to be doing well too, but not at the expense of my freedom. You know, uh, a cousin of mine used to use a, a term, I, I understand that it's used other places as well, wage slavery. So, you know, either way you're probably going to be a type of wage slave. but. It, again, you just have to sort of just kind of decide who, you know, what the important things are. And that's a lot of young people. And, and age, believe it or not, does play a big part in employment because the, you know, the older you get, the more that you're exposed to this stuff. A lot of people and one of these people have less tolerance towards a lot of it. Like, you know, um, there's certain things that I don't like to put up with at work. Um, but I notice younger people seem to be very adaptive uh, towards these things. And I suppose I was when I was younger as well, or, or youth has just changed. Uh, because, you know, they'll come in whenever they, you know, they just want to make that money. Um, I suppose money is not all that important to me. Um, so, a lot of people are like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do some overtime, whereas it's like, man, does anybody want to do mine for me? Right? Uh, like, Dish has mandatory overtime. Uh, you know, you come in four hours on a day off, and that's half the year, you know? You might be thinking, well, it's extra money, and you know, looking for that silver lining isn't necessarily bad, or, or anything like that. But they don't tend to, they don't let you schedule that overtime. Uh, they don't tend to put it at a period of time that would be convenient for you. It'd be a lot more convenient to to have you work that in the morning, so you can kind of have the rest of your day and the next one if your days offer together but they tend to put it kind of smack dab right in the middle of the afternoon or kind of, you know, 
in the earlier part of the evening because that's when you know their their call volumes are sort of the highest um, you know uh, when I used to when, when when I used to sign up for some overtime there because they were they're kind of letting us out of the sixth day they call that uh, you know if we signed up for a couple hours of overtime a week uh, and my shift ended at like six in the morning so I'd go home watch TV and this that and the other maybe take a little nap and then go right back to work at say 6 a.m. after you know like a, oh, sorry my, my shift ended at, uh, at midnight um, so, you know, I'd go home, get home about 12.30, kind of, you know, do a few things, maybe take a little nap, then go grab an energy drink and go right back to work at 6. Like, my day hadn't ended yet, like I just had a long break. Do two hours worth of calls and then get back home by, like, 8.30, then go to sleep. Then do my normal shift. So, um, it was more like a normal day, you know, it was with a big break in it. It was less noticeable. And, and it was kind of cool of them to let me, let me schedule it that way. Uh, but, you know, they kind of quit doing that. So it, it sort of turned into a problem. Um, you know, there are a lot of job sites out there right now. Uh, and, you know, my, my recommendation would be that you maybe go to indeed.com. I've talked about them a lot recently. And check out the reviews on the company. And you're going to see a lot of four and five star reviews. I recommend that you start seeking out some of the bad ones, some of the one, two, three kind of star reviews. And, and read those because, you know, you want to find the, the negatives, you know. If there's a trend that you're noticing, you're going to have a problem with that trend, then you might want to look elsewhere because it's probably going to happen. And what a lot of people, a lot of people seem to have the ability to overlook stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, I'm not necessarily like that. And probably a lot of people aren't as well. Um, so definitely, definitely look up whatever reviews on the, the company you can. Um, again, decide what's sort of important to you. Be careful asking these questions sort of at an interview. Um, you, you, you might want to word them in such a way that, you know, it's not going to seem like you're hunting for a certain thing. That can be kind of difficult. Um, say you got to take care of a relative or something, and, and um, you know, or something like that, and, and just kind of, kind of ask the questions around about that, or you know, mention that you might be interested in taking some classes. You're not sure yet. I, I don't know. Come up with, for some reason, you're asking the questions about scheduling that you are. But these days, you're probably not going to be getting any weekends off. Uh, it seems to be when they really want you to work. But um, you know, come up with your idea of a, uh, of a perfect job. Get on Indeed.com reviews or some other uh, job review site and see if that's what, sort of what that company is providing. And then pursue it from there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, nice talking to you guys. I'm uh, going on the side of